As you can appreciate in glorious Technicolor. For we have entered the 20th <laughs> century, and as well as having Marconi's radio waves, we have the added bonus of pictures on your screens. Now, like an aging Hollywood actor who cries, I'll be back in the 16th outing of a much maligned movie franchise, mentioning no names, so I think you can guess. So, the vehicle that is this program opens up the garage door, or as we say in England, garage, and takes once again to the entertainment highway if only to keep you occupied for an hour or so. Hey, what else are you gonna do? You're still locked down. This week, we ain't pulling no punches. I'll be asking the big questions of whether us folk not using our cars and vehicles has any impact on the environment whatsoever. Stay tuned for that. We'll have a roundup of all the fake news that's fit to print in, well, strangely enough, the news. And I'll be playing that 1980s game show. I'll be playing the 1980s game show host in a brand new Car Boys quiz entitled Name That Track. A bit like Name That Tune with Scouse comedian <laughs> Tom O'Connor. Great crack hat, Tom. I'll be doling out the questions, but instead of asking my contestant to name a popular song of the day, he or she will need to identify which famous racing track we're looking at. Could be a Formula One course with twists and turns, or it could be a NASCAR track, which will just be a big oval full of drunk southerners. Anyway, all that and more, uh, I'd like to introduce a man who needs no introduction. Well, not in his AA meetings anyway. He's Simon, and he's an alcoholic. That was just a rumour, Rich. Sorry. <laughs> and he goes to those meetings for the free coffees and to pick up wonderful women. Um, I'm glad the audience thinks uh, I'm joking. <laughs> yes, uh, this week we've got a great show. We'll be answering all your questions and queries in the mailbag, which as per usual is overflowing. Uh, we have a couple of great driving roads in our Lost Highway feature, and this week our classic car selection is an absolute corker. It's the last of the real Mercedes, the W124 Coupe. Nice. Um, lovely car. So sit back, relax, make sure you've got a tank full of gas, half a pack of cigarettes, and you're wearing sunglasses, even though it's night time. Uh, I'm Simon Tujuan, and we all live in the Yellow Submarine, the Yellow Submarine, the Yellow Submarine. We group in the Yellow Submarine, the Yellow Submarine, the Yellow Submarine. Fantastic. Simon there reminiscing about his days in the Chinese Navy. I believe you were promoted from the rank of cabin boy to first seaman. <laughs> Master Bates. <laughs> Master Bates, yes. Uh, and I'm Richard Green, and I woke up this morning with a sundown shining in. I found my mind in a brown paper bag within. I tripped on a cloud and fell eight miles high. I tore my mind on a jagged sky. I just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in, which is pretty much rounds up my morning routine since 1988. <laughs> and this, this is Cowboys. Ah, so here we are. I'm back to do my rants. We've had another week of nothing going on. How has your week been, Simon? Um, it's been quiet. Been working from home, but not doing much else. Fantastic. Well, obviously, we've not been getting in our cars. We've been staying at home. I've been doing a little bit of work. Um, I've actually had to take my car to the garage. And thankfully, oh, yeah. the garage has just opened. And uh, what I was hoping uh, was going to be a slight adjustment on the handbrake turned out to be two new rear discs. Uh, a set of brake calipers and a set of brakes. Ouch. So, yeah, a little bit expensive, but moving on, at least the car doesn't make a horrendous uh, noise every time I drive down the road. Now, most people haven't been driving around, and my weekly rant, my tirade against injustice, well, basically, my boomer-style moaning at the powers that be and the idiocracy that seems to be ruling our country and our lives is my weekly rant. Now, unless you've been occupying that island that Robinson Crusoe used to live on, or you're doing a six month tour on an Arctic research station, you won't fail to realize that coronavirus, or as we call it here on the show, Cortina 19, has swept the planet like a global pandemic. Strange that. Well, of course, many stories are ranging about number of people dead, number of people infected, crashing global economy, a dystopian future ahead for our children's children's children. Well, 
all that apart from the environment. According to scientists, Mother Earth is returning to her green self. Dolphins are swimming in the canals of Venice. Skies near every international airport are once again blue. And if I were allowed, I could swim off Blackpool Beach and not catch the plague, AIDS or chlamydia from the water. Amazing, joy of joys. I shall strip naked in the back garden, cover myself with hummus and dance around naked, singing the songs about Gaia and the creature that is planet Earth. This Please is don't. the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Well, <clears throat> I hate to burst your bubble, uh, your green bubble campaigners, but apart from the few visual indicators, including super clean seawater in both Venice and Blackpool, which is amazing, uh, the shutdown of the entire world's economy for eight weeks has almost had no effect on either global warming or world pollution levels. In a new report, the United Nations have said that the coronavirus shutdown and the halting of industry has only resulted in a reduction of CO2 greenhouse gas emissions by a mere, wait for it, 6%. Six, six I did say 6%. That's it. You shut down all the car factories in Europe, all the manufacturing plants in China. You take millions, if not billions, of cars off the road globally. You ground 90 to 95% of all aircraft. And believe me, I'm loving this. I live near Heathrow and I usually taste aviation fumes every morning. But you do all of this and you only get a 6% change. Now, the United Nations research goes on to say that this isn't enough to reverse or stop climate change. Well, I don't know what to say to this. Oh, yes, I do. So what's the point of any environmental changes to industry if it results in a mere 6%? This shutdown of industry is something the planet has never seen since the start of the Industrial Revolution 250 years ago. Not World War I, not World War II, not the Spanish flu of 1918, and certainly not 9-11. Hey, the day after 9-11 happened, my girlfriend caught a flight to Nepal from London. Everything still worked. So if we've shut down all our economies beyond any level in which green campaigners are calling for us to do so, and it's had almost no effect on the production of CO2, or our ability to tackle global warming. I hate to say it, but what's the point? Now, I'm not a greenhouse gas denier. I'd like not to taste aviation fuel as I drop my kids off at school. And I really want to drive a Tesla on unlimited free electricity. I'd also like to see more baby seals saved. But, and like JLo, it's a large but, it's going to take the next 100 years at least for us to change the way industry works and the way industry pollutes and to reverse the effect of the greenhouse gases. And to misquote comedian Sean Locke, me washing up a small yogurt pot to put in the recycling isn't going to matter a bean compared to 25 Chinese coal-fired power stations. But like a good citizen, I'll still wash up my yogurt pot in the hope that the air might be a little bit cleaner in the 22nd century. Any thoughts, Simon? Um, I think, when was it, back at 9-11, at there was a statistic that said something like the Earth's surface temperature went up two degrees in that time, because all the pollution and all the clouds, because at the moment we've had really nice sunny days with no clouds, what was happening is those clouds were protecting the Earth. Right. So it meant the temperature was kept cool, but when there's no clouds and no pollution, the temperature rises. <laughs> so that we may have it. We, we may have a position where we've got clean air, but the temperature of the earth is just going up. Okay, that's the, that's the scientific... And you're not denying the existence of global warming. You are How saying dare it's you, going, no. No, I say it's going... I mean, I know you're very keen on promoting the fact that, you know, we never went to the moon and the earth is flat. I'm joking. Mm. But you're not one of those. We've made cheese, no. But <laughs> you do have to question. It's all very nice, this stuff. But it's going to, the thing is, and we keep banging on about it. We're like a flipping bloke, broken record. You and me, we both keep going, technology isn't there yet. We're mm. getting there. It would be good to have electric vehicles in the centre of London. It's good to have more public transport that works. I don't want to drive. Driving's boring. Driving is really, 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 really boring. Most of the time, 95% of the time, driving a car is really boring. Lovely on an open highway, lovely and it is a nice, nice to have the ability to drive when you want to drive. But technology isn't quite there for us mm. to say goodbye completely to cars and the industry that creates cars and so on and so forth. As we mentioned the other week, what was it, 20, 
the size of 20 Wembley stadiums every day being globally fi filled with wasted lithium batteries yeah. if we convert all the petrol cars to electric. So right now, mm, that's not really going to happen, is it? Mm, dare I say it, it's like DAB radio. It's just not going to take off. Hey, <laughs> we might say it. Somebody might offer us a show. Um, right, <laughs> are you ready for a bit of news? Yes, yeah, please. Here we go. It's the news, and first off, this week in Mud Plugger News, Land Rover is working on a range top in V8 version of the new Defender. There it is. Of the rugged 4x4 benefiting from a return to the eight cylinder format, but traditionally sought after by enthusiasts in the, in the original, have been circulating for some time, and which is showing a picture of it right now. Engineers previously indicated the V8 would fit under the bonnet, but stopped short of confirming anything beyond that. Now, however, images show the undisguised Defender, uh, that way, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> driving on the roads outside uh, Land Rover's research and development facility in Gade and Warwickshire, sporting the prototype vehicle stickers reserved for testing mules. Um, while no changes are visible on the front, the rear view reveals a quad exhaust system. Mm. Uh, used by Jaguar Land Rover in only the V8-powered variants. Data from the car suggests that it's powered by the AJ 5-litre supercharged V8 used in the Range Rover Sport SVR and the Range Rover Velar SV autobiography. However, easy for you to say. Mm, however, production of the long-serving AJ will come to an end before this year is out, as it is built in uh, the Bridge End Ford factory, which is going to be closed down, unfortunately. Um, looks good. Amazing. They they haven't made Defenders at Solly Hull, which is mm. what used to be on the back of Land Rover. Uh, Land Rovers you used to see the Land Rover logo with like a flash. Yes. It used to say Solly Hull in there. So yeah. they haven't made them there, I think, for eight years. So this mm. is going to be made probably over in Slovakia. Um, I'm loving the idea of this V8. What's it going to do? Like about eight mpg. <laughs> oh, although they should then start thinking about being a token hybrid as well well i was gonna say what happened to the five a five liter car what happened to the um uh, the electric that's all sort of gone rather quiet at the moment mm. I, i'm i'm wondering whether that is going to really the electric cars are going to get forgotten about a little bit um just because of the virus and we've got other things to sort of worry about mm, but the thing is with that because it's a proper off-roader i wonder if there's a problem with putting batteries in it and where you would locate them well, the trouble Power. is, yeah, if you locate the batteries here, this thing is supposed to go in water. Mm. <laughs> and, and as soon as you get the ingress in there, um, there's a guy in America, talking of which, there's a guy, if Teslas get wet, that's it. You, you know that they, they, they just don't go and go, bring it in, we'll have a look, like you would on mm -hmm. a car. That's it. It's like throwing a mobile phone into the toilet. Not that I've ever done that. Um, but... <laughs> but there's a guy in America who takes Teslas and he mm. hacks them. He buys crashed ones and he hacks them. So we'll take two and make a good yeah. Tesla. He's got in touch with Tesla. And they want nothing to do with him. They're like, no, we can't help you. We're, we're not giving you the codes for that. Um, I, I think it's, it's really interesting how somebody's trying to take that technology, recycle that technology. And Tesla's like, yeah, we want nothing to do with that. Once that car is mm. crashed, once that car's flooded, that's it. You just can't use it again. Yeah. Mm, unusual. Right, yeah, moving. Okay. Go on, sorry. Uh, as I said, I'm not sure whether you... Uh, it's, it's weight distribution, where you put all those mm. batteries in. And that. Yeah. Have a quick look at it again. It is, it is a sexy looking car, although I don't think it is... I think that looks like a, uh, a Range Rover. I think that looks like a Range Rover Sport. I don't think it looks like a Defender. There's too much cack on it. I like the, the, the V8 engine, but I'd want plastic seats. I'd want mm. an inside and aluminium that I could wash down with a hose. I want enough room in the back to get a sheep. Um, obviously, if that's for my own personal gratification. And uh, <laughs> a load of friends. Um, I want it basic. I don't want alloy wheels. I want steel wheels. It's a, mm. it's a Land Rover Defender. It's supposed to be a utility vehicle. That is going to be bought by dickheads that live in Chelsea. Right, yep. moving, sorry, go on. 
No, 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 absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Moving on, and in our Cortina 19 news roundup, the massive global effects of the canal, cano shall I put my teeth back in? Coronavirus <laughs> pandemic have had a huge impact on the car industry. Factories have been shuttered around the world. Dramatic stock market falls have hit the value of virtually every car firm. Vehicle sales have plummeted and most major motorsport events have been cancelled. So let's take a look. BMW have warned that it expects the coronavirus pandemic to affect demand for new cars for the remainder of 2020. Even as lockdown restrictions are eased, BMW Group chairman also cautioned that the industry shouldn't expect the European car market to recover as quickly as it has in China since the lockdown measures were loosened there. Meanwhile, Skoda has taken a number of measures to support emergency vehicle fleet. Uh, customers of blue light vehicles on the road. Czech firm supplies specially modified Karok, Kodiak, Superb and Octavia vehicles to a number of emergency services and other frontline care providers. <laughs> Demand for the vehicles has been significantly increased and Skoda has both its expanded its service and maintenance provisions for such vehicles. VW, meanwhile, have resumed production at many of its plants and to do so has required the introduction of hundreds of new health and safety measures, including making disinfectant and sanitizer easily available to staff. Well, I hope you're doing that anyway, uh, to enable that staff at MDEN factory, which produces the Passat and the Artium, have started producing their own disinfectant dispensers, right? VW uh, disinfectant. I wonder if they'll ch <laughs> t change them into optics after the... Uh, you know, coronavirus is finished. You can take a little whiskey and go. <laughs> Fiat Chrysler automobiles, as they're called, it um, posted a net loss of 1.45 billion. I did say billion in the first quarter of 2020. The group's brands, which include Alpha, Fiat, and Jeep, sold a total of only 800,000 cars worldwide, which is down 21% on 2019 levels as various restrictions were put in place. Fiat Chrysler said it's currently preparing to resume production at several factories based on demand, local restrictions, and the introduction of new health and safety measures. Uh, one uh, good uh, uh, silver lining is less people are buying the crap that Fiat Chrysler produce. Mm. Meanwhile, here in the UK, new car registrations fell by 97.3% year on year in April 2020, with just over 4,000 cars sold due to coronavirus lockdown restrictions. The conclusion of a number of pre-ordered sales helped the Tesla Model 3 to the top of the sales charts just ahead of the Jaguar I-Pace. And finally, the Italians. Uh, Ferrari has been to began to open its Maranello factory in Italy following a series of training sessions under its back contract program. You have to do that at the same time to the supercar manufacturer are gradually ramping up production aiming to return output by next week there we go so, so uh, let, me get, let me get that straight tesla was, was the number one selling car yes <laughs> tesla model 3 top of the sales wow. charts just ahead of the jaguar you can only order it online. That's probably why. That's probably it, because you can't turn up and view a car at the moment. I went mm. and got, as I mentioned earlier, my rear, well, I was hoping an adjustment, but 180 quid lighter later, my rear um, uh, a brake disc fixed. And uh, in the garage, they'd spent a week putting up plastic everywhere. So there was just a little tiny hole for me to hang, mm. hand over my keys and hand over the credit card, and everything was a wall of perspex. Um, oh, okay. And then behind that was the people at, at the garage, and it, and it's not a, a dealership. This is a proper back yeah. street um, um, local uh, non-brand garage, and they're like, <laughs> you know, they're on it. So, um, but yes, um, so I'm guessing if you went to a major garage, you just can't look at cars, you can't buy cars. So Tesla Model Three, order it on the internet. It's the same people that order these things, isn't it? It's a phone, it's an iPhone. Yeah. So yeah, uh, but, good. So I'm assuming then that's the first time that we've had an electric vehicle top the sales chart. Yes. Followed by, uh, was it the I-Pace? I-Pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is the I-Pace is, let me get it right, it's the Jaguar uh, 4x4. It is, with the yeah. E-Pace being the electric version of it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, interesting news. Um, I believe we've got something from the Far East. Of course, because we do like doing electric car news. Oh, yes. From the, chart, from the uh, Far East. We do. Uh, Chinese EV manufacturer BYD, yes, remember them, yes. Uh, has stepped up its plans to enter the European passenger vehicle market and will launch its Tang 
EV600 mm. electric SUV in Norway this year because Norwegians love the electric vehicles. And I, um, and, and I know you like a bit of Tang, Simon. Yes, uh, <laughs> the firm which already sells electrified buses and coaches in Europe has chosen Norway as the first country to receive the Tang on the basis mm. that they have a strong charging infrastructure and existing strong demand for EV, even though they've got lots of oil in that country. The SUV arrival will be followed by the European launch of a range of electric commercial vehicles, including panel van and yard tractor, do like a yard tractor, and two sizes of lorry. Uh, the Tang now is the second generation, uh, is available uh, with five or seven seats, and it has a 82.8 kilowatt an hour battery. It's going to have a range of 373 miles, which probably isn't going to be that, especially in Norway where it's cold. Yeah. Um, it features an electric motor on uh, each axle for permanent four wheel drive. There's a combined power output of 483 bhp, which is 81 bhp more than the Audi e tron. Uh, it's said to accelerate from 0 62 in 4.4 seconds and be capable of fast charging in, in as little as 30 minutes. Uh, pricing hasn't yet been confirmed. But a starting price of around 29,600 in China means that the Tang is likely to be significantly to significantly undercut its Western rivals when it arrives in Europe. It looks like, because we yes. know the, the Chinese like to mash their cars up, it looks like that MG version. Oh, yes. The new MG. The, yeah, go on. And MG. So you mix the two together, you get that, get Tang. This, this looks, I mean, this is a fashionable thing that everybody's doing, but this looks very Lexus mm. at the front. Um, now, the company that's manufacturing the Tang, because we all like a bit of Tang, uh, <laughs> is BYD, as Simon mentioned. Now, if you were listening to the show two weeks ago, uh, we uh, did a, a quiz on Chinese homages to Western car designs. We're not saying rip yeah. And homages. It's not a fake, it's a copy. Uh, this, it used to be the logo for BYD. <laughs> this was their logo. They didn't even yes. change the colour. And in no way does that really say Bavarian Motorworks, does it? It doesn't say Bavarian <laughs> Motorworks at all. That's hilarious. Well, no. Looking at the picture of the Tang, it's got a blue oval by the looks of things. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Good luck trying to sell that in Germany. They've already been sued by the Germans on German soil. Uh, finally, mm. uh, last bit of news. In car crash update news, this is the best one of the day. Joyriders wrecked a £60,000, that's about $70,000 Range Rover, in a horror crash just moments after cloning the key to steal it, which is a big thing at the moment, in London. Mm. The suspected thieves smashed the £60,000 vehicle on the Brighton Road in Purley. They're believed to escape the wreckage uninjured at 3.30am. I wouldn't have said Purley was London. Eh. The other side of the M25, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Not towards Brighton. Anyway, they, they, they stole it uh, on Monday, arrested a man and released him without charge, and they're seeking a second man. The two suspected thieves um, smashed, into the, smashed the vehicle into a lamppost uh, in Purley at 3.30 in the morning. Police arrested a man, later charged him without seeking a second. Uh, pictures from the scene show the Range Rover. This is great. Sliced in two. That doesn't even, that looks mm. like a shed now. Uh, with its engine, bonnet and tyres attached uh, and lying near a post office and a bus stop on the other side of the road. The CCT footage showed the luxury car skidding down the road moments before it hit the lamppost. Police said that initially they'd been called to the area to report a car burglary. Okay, I've never heard of a car burglary, but anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, this Amazing. is unbelievable. What's even more unbelievable is go to YouTube and check out the CCTV footage. Just go to YouTube, put in Range Rover, Brighton crash. This car barrels down the road, and as it enters the shot of the CCTV, mm. it is flying. It is literally flying. Uh, I'm thinking you're doing 90 miles an hour, and then it's bang on one side, bang on the other side, and then just catastrophic. As you can see, it looks like a giant has ripped this open like a can of beans. Mm. As, and, as good as it is that they got away and walked away, it's not good because they obviously stole it. They obviously stole it. I mean, thank, you know, 
nobody wants anybody to die and i hope i hope they're all right but really shouldn't be stealing these cars um it's a big thing at the moment uh certainly in the uk people are speeding because there's mm. nothing on the roads and certainly london it's a it's like it's four o'clock in the morning all the time and so everybody is hammering their cars and this is sort of incidents of that are happening yeah. Yeah. is it time for a bit of classic car selection it is time for classic let, car let me just right, boys are you ready it's been eight it's weeks now I've been living with the band, Simon, and they're just, they're just very... Oh, there they go again. Oh, living with jazz, jazz musicians, it's not good. <laughs> uh, classic car this week. This week is an 80s classic, uh, but it can trace its roots back to the 70s as the Mercedes developed the mid-sized chassis back in 1977. Uh, it's the first car to wear the E-Class badge. It is the Mercedes W124. Oh, sexy. 300 CCE. Is that um, silver or gold? This is gold. Oh. I, I knew you'd like that one. Uh, this is the one that's actually for sale, and I'll tell you how much oh, it was. Okay, I'm getting excited. In a bit. How much um, at the time of his introduction, 84, many of the features were advanced for its time. It had plastic side mouldings, which were on the side here. Oh, Can yes. They're perfect um, for covering the rust. <laughs> but it was used to increase aerodynamics. Oh, yeah. uh, it had a single windshield wiper, which most Citroen Saxos Very copied cool. and one afterwards. Um, and it also had remote fold down head restraints to increase rear visibility when reversed in. Um, it's a versatile chassis, it's available in saloon, estate, coupe, and convertible flavours. And production ran from 1984 to 1995 for the saloon. Uh, the coupe, which this one is, uh, it was uh, built from 1987 to 1996. Um, Mercedes 124 300CE coupe was designed in the mid 80s. In a time when designers were more carefree, in this case, a guy called Bruno Sacco, uh, who also designed the uh, Mercedes 190E. Uh, coupes have their, uh, neither have the space practicality, are heavier than sports cars, and have none of their agility. Yet, the 300C is part of a series that's commonly referred to as the last real Mercedes yeah. being solidly built and comfortable for its occupants. Uh, the coupe was actually shorter than the saloon, uh, but it's no slouch with a three litre 12 valve six cylinder producing 185 bhp. The body was sleek even by today's standards and features pillarless doors in terms of safety. The car was excellent, incorporating an airbag, uh, nice adjustable looking. seat, seat belts, and intelligent pedals that moved away when you had an impact. In, in terms of mechanical specification, it had a four speed manual as standard, but the five speed manual could be offered as a low cost option. There was also the option of a 24 valve six cylinder mated to five speed auto box two, but steer clear of the ones where owners have added AMG badges on them because <laughs> they only produce 25 of the AMG cars right. officially. Um, so beware. Uh, suspension was great too, featuring a now common five link independent rear suspension. While the W124 are strong cars, even now, uh, some have been known to clock a million miles on their, yeah. on their dashboards. Um, they're not perfect. Watch out for traces of oil in the coolant, which indicates uh, cracks in the heads. Uh, check the ABS lights go out when they should, and check the front screen frame for corrosion uh, and the diff, which also leaks. So, what should you pay for a car that all the car that you're ever going to need? Well, prices vary wildly uh, mm. with decent spec uh, and decent condition ones from around £3,000, uh, topping out to around 9000 with the yeah. rare Brabus version, uh, okay. asking for around 16000 wow. Again, get clear of those because they're rare to find. Um, but I looked online today and found this gold one, uh, 1990 Hatridge, and no, you like gold cars. Yeah, um, that way, that way three hundred. That's it. Yeah, Yay. Yay, three hundred CE uh, with with mushroom leather, one hundred forty thousand miles mushroom on leather. the top in London for five thousand pounds. That's good. And so awesome much so, yeah. I, I know you like this car because uh, yes, there's, there's me driving one. one about ten years ago. Um, there you are with it, trying to That's run you over. Yeah, that's me getting run over by one. 
You could get. I think, I think you're checking the exhaust there. I, I am. Yeah, you, you could. I think because we 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 filmed we we filmed the whole day in Staines, I believe it was Staines yeah, car park with that car. And um, my friend bought it for three hundred and fifty quid, and we asked if we could borrow it for the filming. Pillarless coupe. It 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 was covered covered in rust around the wheel mm. arches, around the doors, but. It drove like it was brand new. Every single switch, every, oh, there was so much rust on that car. Every switch on that car worked. Every single, everything. Uh, I, I've dr I dr spent the whole day driving it. It was a mm. very pleasant, slow, it's slow engine, slow car, not a 60s, maybe 10 or 11, but yeah. a solid car. They do not make Mercedes like that anymore. Mm. Um, Hence the title, the last of the real Mercedes. It is. It is totally the last of the real one. Beautiful car to drive. The boot is is ginormous, and we know because we mm. put somebody in the boot, and he got in there really <laughs> yeah. easily. You get about three <laughs> three golf sets of golf clubs in the back of that boot. <laughs> I, I think that is a perfect uh, classic um, classic car selection car because that's what it's all about. You can mm. buy them cheapish for about five. That looks mint. Mm. That one. You can't mm. run it every day, and it is going to maybe occasionally break down, but they have got bulletproof engines. You know, half a million miles, not a problem. Just before Chrysler got involved with Mercedes and completely screwed them in the late 90s, that mm. is one of the last good old cars. And we filmed with it all day, and I drove it probably for about three hours around London. And I would say it was a really very, very comfortable. But what the one thing, I did park it on my driveway, and then I, I dropped it back at my friend's house that we borrowed the car yeah. off to film. And um, there, my driveway was just covered with bits of blue paint and rust because the car was so very rusty. A £350 uh, Mercedes is not the best in the world. But well done you. Well done, sir. That is definitely... Uh, classic car selection. We shall uh, have to put really? that into the uh, into the archives. Shall we have a little bit? Shall we have a little bit of Lost Highways now? Do you think? Yes, yeah, go for it. Here we go. Get ready with your hoo ha. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Ah. They're versatile. This band. Mm. Ooh. Ah. Okay. Thanks, Dwayne, Eddie. Yeah, time for our Lost Highways on the show. Uh, this is the feature where listeners email in and give us their favourite roads and the reason why they love them. It could be a uh, quiet coastal road that leads down to the sea. Alternatively, it could be a straight two-lane blacktop that leads into infinity and invites you to gun the pedal to the metal. Whatever your poison, let us know your perfect driving road here at Carboys. Christy the bear from Amsterdam says hello. Uh, <laughs> she is an American li living abroad. She's been living in Holland for more than 20 years. She likes to smoke. Uh, but her favorite driving road oh, is. Yes. Her favorite. Uh, my name is uh, Hans, and she's my lover, and also my partner. Um, uh, so, so her favourite driving road is the Atlantic Road in Norway. Okay, so she gets all over this girl. Voted Norway's engineering feat of the century, the jaw-dropping Atlantic Road has got to be seen, or rather driven, to be believed. The eight-kilometre-long, five-mile route connects the island of, here we go, Avorui, with the mainland bending and swooping over the ocean like an elevated roller coaster. The journey is packed <laughs> with beautiful Norwegian scenery, attracting thousands of keen road trippers every year. The Atlantic Road is super stunning in a pleasant weather, with the sun reflecting off the sea and slowly dipping behind the surrounding mountains in the evening. But it's even more spectacular when the wind picks up and the waves crash against the bridges. It sounds dangerous, <laughs> making for a dramatic <laughs> atmosphere uh top tip drive your car slowly says christy pull over to explore the islands and pack a warm jacket the weather can be the weather can be unpredictable she hired a car to drive it last summer a small volvo but her dream is to take her toyota land cruiser up there for a scandinavian road trip there you go mm -hmm. the That's atlantic fantastic. road which sounds quite exciting Lovely. you're a fan of all I things scandinavian it. aren't you simon I am. I'd love to travel. And I'm not just talking about the pornography. Hey! <laughs> uh, yes, now moving on swiftly. Uh, we've had another email from, uh, this time from Stevie666 uh, in hell currently, apparently. Um, but he's dreaming of the time he, he can uh, head back to Cornwall. Uh, he's an avid surfer. 
Um, he says, one of the best driving roads uh, I can around the world is in England. In fact, oh. it's, uh, it's the route he takes every summer on his way to Cornwall. Nice. Um, he says, if you experience the wonders of Dartmoor, if you want to experience the wonders of Dartmoor, situated at the heart of Devon, simply take the B3212 from the Cathedral City of Exeter, nice. uh, and this will guide you right across the middle of Dartmoor, where more on the Hampstead not Hampstead, but just somewhere else. What's in London. Hampstead, yes. Yes. Uh, switch to the B3357 at two bridges and then follow the signs of Tavistock. Around 33 miles in the all, you'll be rewarded with fast sweeping bends and undulations in an ancient landscape of stunning views, epic granite tours, deep wooded valleys, and fast flowing rivers in rugged open spaces. Just watch out for the Dartmoor ponies and the sheep. Uh, he yeah. says, the road is amazing. First thing in the morning or at dusk, he drives an Audi A6 estate. Mm, I can't have them all with a four litre engine. Uh, it's a perfect thing for these roads uh, and his boat is where he sleeps when he gets down to Cornwall. So he sleeps with his car and his boat and his sheep. No. <laughs> I, don't I, think be too crank. I think that should have said boot. <laughs> 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 Bugger oh, you, bugger you also correct. Yeah, he slips <laughs> in the boot of his car. Well, uh, if you're listening in America. Uh, oh, I see. It's the trunk. He sleeps on the, he sleeps in the trunk because it's an Audi estate when he goes surfing. Yeah, with a sheep. He might have a boat in there, he might have a dinghy, who knows? And a sheep, That's which is slightly worrying. Um, I've driven this road, it is nice. It's really nice, mm. but I think I sat in a lot of traffic because I was going on holiday with the children to Cornwall in the summer holidays. And it was incredibly oh, busy, okay. but yeah. um, driving around that part of the world is really nice. Um, I'm, I've got a, I love Cornwall, absolutely love it. There's some really good driving roads, but you've got to be careful. Very tall and thin to the extent, yeah. um, because the roads I think are built on old um, uh, prehistory routes of sheep. The roads have, have worn down, so you're looking. You've been down there, so you've, you're looking at maybe ten. To 10, five to ten feet lower mm -hmm. than the level of the fields and they're narrow so you've got the fields here then you've got the road here and then you've got hedges so you're always sort of you know trying to get you make your way around here not very fast and then you'll see a tractor coming from the other direction you're like bugger mm. i've got to reverse this damn thing all the way down here but yeah fantastic <laughs> good driving road uh you can contact the show if you want to suggest your driving road if you want to ask any questions if you want to give us any suggestions what we should be doing on the podcast it's the email is car hyphen boys with a z always with a z at outlook.com we're on facebook car hyphen boys boys with a z at car boys with four z's twitter we are twittering at car hyphen boys with a z at car underscore boys with a z uh and we're instagramming uh, we are instagramming there we are we're on nice. instagram we are uh, car underscore boys with three z's fantastic time now on the show for me to pick up my acoustic guitar and take a look at your letters in my bulging mailbag <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, all right. all right, all right. Yes, all right. They do medieval works as well. I, I really get the smell of marijuana, uh, gin, and heroin uh, is palpable from the uh, band in the corner. Yes, it's time for uh, the mailbag. You email, uh, pretty much you do email, you don't write to us. Nobody writes to us. And I'm not giving you my bloody address anyway, you weirdos. Uh, you email the uh, mailbag and, uh, you know, we, we basically try and answer your questions, sometimes correctly, sometimes incorrectly, because uh, after all, you're not paying for this show. It's free. Um, first one in the mailbag this week, Tommy2710 says, hi from Cleveland. Uh, I, th I don't know whether that's Ohio or the north of England. Uh, no, it's in the north of England. Okay. Tommy's in his 60s. He drives a 1994. Look at this beast. This is unbelievable. A 1994 Proton. Oh. That is his car. I bet it stinks. He's owned it for 20 years. Tommy, this thing could do with a wash. <laughs> uh, look how green it is. Um, look at the on that. This, this wheel looks a bit wrong as well. This wheel looks like it's like at this sort of angle as opposed to straight up. Um, <laughs> so he's owned it for 20 years. He feels like a pensioner in it. 
He's been yeah. told it's on its last legs. Something's about to go bang on it. He'd really like to buy a nice rear-wheel drive saloon sedan with no, more luxury. What more luxury could you get than the Proton, Proton Saga, which is based on a 1980s um, Mitsubishi Lancer? Mitsubishi, yeah. yeah. I, I personally reckon, I had a quick look on the internet, stick to the Far East. Um, okay. obviously, if you're happy with this pile of crud, why don't you get something a bit more reliable? So we went from 1994 to 2002. He's three litre. Look at this bad boy. Three mm. litre Toyota Camry, 79 on the clock, which it's got a, um, it's got a, a, um, a cam chain, so you don't need to replace that. So mm. um, full leather, auto box, CD, air condition, sunroof, 2,200. Look at that. You can either have that, Tommy, really, which must stink, or you can have that beast for two, just over £2,000. Insurance is going to be cheap for you, Tom, as well, um, because you're old but not too old. I think 70s is when they start really hurting your insurance. If you're still in his 60s, mm. go and get that. What an absolutely beautiful-looking car. I mean, really? My dad's just in his 70s. If he turned up with this... Uh, I would just disown him. I'd go, hey, what is this horrible thing? Tommy, we, we go and buy one of those or buy anything. What, what other letters have we got? Uh, yeah, what have we got? We've got uh, Charlie from New York City. New York City? He says he loves the show. Thank you very much. Uh, he's listening in lockdown but getting very bored every day. Uh, he started to dream about the open highway as we all do. Oh, uh, he's thinking of heading down to see the family in Kentucky after the no, no, coronavirus no, 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 no. curfew is yeah. over. Uh, now he's only got a very old Toyota Corolla or Corona, one or the other. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> what car? What would car boys advise him to buy if he wants to hit the highways? He has ten grand in the Ooh. bank and uh, wants a, a really sports car or GT if he will. Um, okay. There's the obvious thing. Americans got to be Mustangs. Yes, I think Hit you're right. Road convertible right. versions as well. Yeah, we had a look. Um, I mean, he'll get there in his Corolla, but he won't get there in style. Oh, yeah. The Corolla is mm. very reliable, but pretty boring to drive front wheel drive car. Oh. Uh, now, I'd never buy this car in the UK because petrol is too expensive. Know. And so mm. are parts. But if I was a native New Yorker, hey, I'm walking here. Um, I go and I wanted to go down to Bourbon country as they call uh, mm. Kentucky. I'd buy this. Now we had a look in New York at the moment. You can buy a 2009 Ford Mustang, 3.7 yeah. liter V6 auto. That's enough power for anybody. 66 on the clock, immaculate condition. Uh, that's just under $10,000. Wow. Um, that's that's the car I'd buy. To, I reckon you could buy that. He could take yeah. it down there. He could come back, and I reckon he could sell it for the same money. Absolutely. And as I said, they do a convertible version on there as well. So if he wants to um, drop the top, he can do as well. Yeah. So that's that's Fantastic. the car we. Uh, sorry, go on. No, 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 no. That's what I was going to say. It was uh, that's the car we would recommend. I think so. I mean, I if I was going to say iconic cars that are currently out. That's the one I'd go for, or the Dodge, uh, the Dodge Charger, Charger, maybe. No, the Challenger, the two door is the Challenger, but that's going to be less yeah. reliable than the Mustang because it's Dodge. Mm. Mm. But one of those two cars, I think, I think I did, I did find uh, uh, in the same website a, ch a really new Charger, and I thought, a Challenger, sorry, and I thought this is the one, but it was only eight grand, and then. There was a big thing about water damage, so I thought maybe we'll leave that one alone. Ooh. Now, I have a picture. Good, You've yeah. had so a... Okay. Go on, sorry. No, no, no. So, uh, we've got... Uh, it was an uh, email. Another email. And uh, Laura from Yarnica. Uh, Laura from Yarnica in, in Cyprus. Uh, says, hello, boys. Ooh. Hello. Uh, so, uh, says, uh, I love the show. She owns a 2010 Honda Civic and says it's a great car and very reliable, but she keeps finding little black pieces of metal on uh, her driveway, yeah. or hair driveway. Um, what, what, are, what are they, and should she be worried? Uh, she says uh, they're about two inches long, 
and a quarter of an inch wide and they are grey metal, possibly aluminium. So, what do we think this is? We've got a we, picture of it. We think it's, it's these. We think it's the fins. Uh, of the from, radiator. Yeah, from cooling fins from the radiator or the condenser. Mm. One of the two that are, that are flaking off. I had a 2004 Honda Civic Coupe, um, and I used, to find, I used to have a similar problem. I'd find these little black fins on the driveway. And so my, I took them to my mechanic when I was going to car service, and I said, do you know what this mm. is? He said, oh, yeah, cooling fins off the condenser. Your condenser is nearly needs repra replacing, maybe the next service. Well, that was 2009. Okay. Uh, yeah. my, the condenser has just broken on the car, and my father now owns the car. So we've had another 10 years out of it. So I wouldn't worry about it. I'd carry on driving the car. As long as the air con's working, everything's mm. working. It's just these things are not built to last forever. And they, they, the, the little things there, you can see them, they just flake off and they're about so big and about so wide. Doesn't matter. Just keep driving. Um, yeah. So, and you do yeah, need the, the air cons. Fine. Sorry? I said the other one here and there is fine, but if there's yeah, yeah. lots of if it's handfuls, then, then get worried. And she'll also yeah. know because she'll be driving around Cyprus going, I'm so hot, the air conditioning isn't working. Um, <laughs> you need air conditioning in Cyprus. Finally, got an email from a friend of mine. This is Andreas who sent me this email. He lives in Croydon. Now, he's socially distancing, mm. so he yes. likes to walk the streets of Croydon um, to stay yeah. healthy. Um, also, you know, to spy on people. No, he's, he's, he's not being creepy. He's walking the streets of London to stay healthy. He came across this vehicle um, and we wanted to know what the car boys thought. So I'll show you the first picture of the vehicle. This is on a driveway mm. in Croydon. Yeah, Ooh, so, yeah nice. so that's the first picture he took, um, which mm -hmm. I think is rather interesting. I think the logo on the door might say something. And, and then there's the, yeah. the second picture of the vehicle from the, from the other side. Uh, which mm -hmm. might 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 give the game away, and then the number yes. plate definitely gives the game away. I think oh, we're nice. yes. I th I was I was also, park, I it's classic. Yeah, I don't, what's the significance of seventeen? I don't know. I don't know. That's probably the only Reggie could find. <laughs> I had no idea that Jeff Goldblum actually lived. In Croydon, but apparently Jeff Goldblum uh, did. And anyway, he went round the back of the house because he was interested. Yes. Said, "Who owns this Jeep?" And and then it and then it all worked out because that's what the back garden gate looked like. So you know, it's uh, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff Goldblum lives inside with uh, all his strange uh, animals uh, inside there. So fantastic! If you want to get in touch, uh, with a big white beard. Found with a big white beard, played by. Uh, the late lamented Richard Attenborough. Uh, if you want to get in touch with the show, with um, our letter uh, page, letter box, um, our mail, huge mail bag that's bulging, email the car boys at car boys at outlook.com, car boys at outlook.com. Facebook, we are car boys with a Z at car boys with all the Zs. <laughs> uh, we're car boys with a Z at car underscore boys with a Z. And Tell them what it is on the um, the other one. It's, Instagramming. It's car underscore <laughs> car underscore boys with three Zs. Fantastic. Oh, you ready for a competition? Shall we do it? I am. Here we yes. go. Music on its way when I finally get the music working. Do, do, do. Oh, shall we try that again? This. Yeah. Right. So shall we try I that again? Smart. Okay. Imagine, imagine we've actually edited this. And it's time now on this show to look at the vehicle, imagine we've edited that again. Time now on the show for the big quiz. Has it stopped? No, it's still going. Here it goes. Oh no, stop now. Right, stop now. That was awful. Uh, yes. But as the show is effectively live, we are not editing that out. Time now on the show for our weekly car quiz. We turn the clock back to the 1980s and we remember that great British TV star and comedian Tom O'Connor. Great mm. crack, Tom. Great crack. 
He was one of the stars in the racist ITV show, The Comedians, a show where every single comedian wore a red velvet suit. But also, he was the host of Name That Tune. Now, we've reimagined that show to become the Carboy's very own homage, now entitled Name That Track. Now, here I'll be showing the contestant the layout of a particular racing track in the world, and I'll be asking him to name it. It could be a complicated Formula One track in Asia, or it could be a NASCAR track in America, which is just a big circle. We're giving a lucky lad who's come all the way down from uh, the toilet to upstairs in the loft. Welcome, welcome, Simon. Thank you. Your thank chance you, thank you. to win big on the show today. The audience Fantastic. are going crazy. All right, enough audience. This week's prize is a Cortina 19 special. We're giving you a large mm. tin of red paint so you can paint a cross on your front door in the style of a medieval plague and also a bell so you can chant unclean, unclean <laughs> as you roam the dystopian vision of London. How does that sound? Uh, uh, it's enticing. Super smashing. Great. Is there anyone you'd like to say hello to? Uh, I'd like to say hello to Nigel Mansell. Oh, fantastic. And he would like to say hello back to you. Uh, okay, Simon, so I'll be showing you the famous layouts of the famous racetracks, and you'll have to name that track. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. I can offer you clues as well. So if okay. you are uncertain, say, I would like a clue, please, Bob, even though my name's Tom. Here we go. Here's your first one. Can uh, you name that track? Sorry, Started off easy. That will be Silverstone. Woo! Fantastic. A very British circle and a precious metal. Silverstone. <laughs> Fantastic. Quite a complicated track, that one. Question one correct. You'll right, here we go. Number two. Can you name this track? Mm, ooh. That looks like. Can I have a clue, please? Bob? You can have a clue. You'll find this circuit popular down under. Oh, Albert Park, Australia. Hey, Melbourne, correct. Albert Park in Melbourne. Look at that, fantastic. Moving swiftly on. Don't worry, your bendy bully's safe. Every, okay. here we go. This is number three. So, so far, two out of two. And we're playing for a grand prize of you being able to paint a red cross on your front door. Question okay. three, name this track oh that looks like because it's got a tunnel it's got to be monica Woo, correct it's every f1 champion's uh favorite place to have an apartment where he doesn't live but only has one for tax purposes the beautiful uh principality of monaco in the south of the south of france that was monaco my I don't, I don't like f1 i know you like it i can't stand yes. f1 that is a race i watch every year monaco mm. is a fantastic race even though the people that live there are apparently scumbags uh moving on question four so three out of three correct so far fantastic question four name that track oh that's the shortened version of hockenheim in hockenheim Sweden. correct yes the country that had two very ancestral tours of Europe in the 20th century. The German track of Hockenheim. Well done. Oh, you're doing good so far. Fantastic. Super smashing right? great. Super smashing great. Four out of four. Okay, here we go. Um, I can give you a clue if you require on. Question five. Name that track. Pull back. It looks got a straight... Then, uh, give me a clue. Probably the best track in the USA. Probably the best track in the USA. I will go for then Indianapolis. Mm, uh -uh. Far too complicated for Indianapolis, I'm afraid. That's the Sebring. Oh, okay. Yeah. They bring in Florida, I think it is. Uh, moving on. So, okay, what well, you got f f uh, four out of five okay. so far. So, one wrong. Yeah. That's not, not doing bad. Okay, question six. We're asking you, Simon, to name that track. Uh, it's a bit old and wooden. It's got to be Monza. Monza. 
Italy. And it is correct. It's Monza. Pista, pizza and pasta are available at the pit stop. That's Monza. Fantastic. Old track. I don't know whether it's the oldest in the world. I didn't do that much research. Um, Question. No. Is it sort of? It's, it's one of the oldest. The longest. Okay. Five out of six. Five out of six. Moving on. Question seven. Can you name this track? Ooh, it looks like... Uh, I can give you a musical clue. Okay. Uh, what was that? Oh, I've got to do it again. Yeah. Mm. It I is... Can't... It is. Uh, if you were if you if you were drinking and dancing here, you'd be drinking caipirinhas and you'd be dancing the samba. Oh, uh, into Lagos, Brazil. Uh, country's right. Uh, Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. Yes. Okay. Sao Paulo. Do we give you that one? Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. Sorry. I don't, oh, it is. <laughs> yes. I don't know what they're called. I just know the the towns they're in. For God's <laughs> sake, man. I hate Formula One. Right, moving <laughs> swiftly on. Okay. Uh, here we go. Question eight. Simon, are you ready to name that? Track? Yes. Oh, that's uh, Spa, Belgium. Well done. Yes, it's a boring country, but the track's named after a British corner shop. That is, of course, Spa in Belgium. You are doing amazing. You've literally got one wrong so far. This is really yeah. good. This is the crap circuit so it was a, yeah, there you go forget spa okay and here we go question nine a penultimate question are you ready okay. can you name that track uh, it's a figure of eight so it must be suzuka in japan well done you are correct say arigato and mushi mushi to this far <laughs> eastern <laughs> course <laughs> na, 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 na. suzuka in japan figure of eight i can't believe you know this <laughs> Your levels of sadness uh, no no bounds. I'm amazed. Right, yeah. finally, this okay. is a big one. You've got eight, eight out of nine so far. Let's make it nine out of ten. Can okay. you name this track? I can give you a clue. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Um, uh, give me a clue. Okay. It's a NASCAR Floridian favourite, and it's a Ferrari is named after this track as well. Uh, Classic uh, Ferrari from the late 60s, early Oh, 70s. Daytona. Daytona, you're correct. That's just a track. We go round in a circle and round in a circle. As, if you want uh, to make it interesting, you can go round. Round in a yeah, circle. Oh, no, come back here. And then round in a circle. Yeah, a little bit of Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, at the end of that. So, well done, Simon. The crowd are going crazy. Hey. Uh, come on, crowd. There you go. Yep, that's it. You walk off with a tin of red paint, post office red, to paint a big X on uh, your front door and a little bell to wander around going, I'm clean. I'm unclean. So you can uh, move from the bathroom to the kitchen and the kitchen to the bathroom. That's about it from us this week. Uh, thank you for joining us on the show. Please, you've got, they, they've been lucky. Our audience, I, I refer to you in the plural. Um, I should obviously refer to you in the single. You've been very mm. lucky this week because you've had two shows. We've, yes. we've been busy. Not that either of us are doing that much work at the moment. So that's all good, like, like the rest of the world. So that's about it for this show. Thank you very much for tuning in. We are back, same time, same place, hopefully next week, if uh, the coronavirus doesn't get one or t'other of us. Thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure uh, you write to the show as well, car-boys at outlook.com. Car-boys, boys always wear the Z, at outlook.com. What are you planning to do this week, Simon? Uh, wrap up warm because it's going to be cold this it's week. It's going to be cold? Yes, it is. It's going to be cold in London. All right, wrap Trust up warm. <laughs> and as he says goodbye and I say goodbye, see you next time! Bye! <laughs>